This is Psalms 119. The thing about Psalms 119 is it's the, last, it's the longest psalm in the book of Psalms. And if you can see the verses we're looking at, it's 105 to 112. So, and there was more after that, too. You know, So you can imagine how much was in front of it, and there's still more behind it. This section, though, this section, I said, this is it for baptism. This is, this is a scripture that applies. Your word is a lamp for my feet, a light on my path. I have taken an oath and confirmed it that I will follow your righteous laws. I have suffered much. Preserve my life, Lord, according to your word. Accept, Lord, the willing praise of my mouth and teach me your laws. Though I constantly take my life in my hands, I will not forget your law. The wicked have set a snare for me, but I have not strayed from your precepts. Your statues are my heritage forever. They are the joy of my heart. My heart is set on keeping your decrees to the very end. I would ask that you pray with me. Lord, may the words of my mouth, the meditations of my heart, be acceptable to you, Lord. We ask for your presence. We accept you as our Savior. And we ask that we walk in your light. In Jesus' name, amen. This is Old Testament. This is Old Testament. And you say, well, what are you getting? Is it for baptism? You know, baptism, that was in the New Testament. That's when Jesus, John the Baptist was running, roaming around the countryside, and Jesus got baptized, and, you know, yeah. But water is a cleansing situation. It, in all cultures, water cleans. And folks, we sure get dirty sometimes. <laughs> Uh, I can remember haying. Any of you have ever gone out and hayed, you understand what I'm talking about. It's not so much the cutting of the hay. It's when it's, uh, it, it's put in those little you know, bales, and it's kicked off the, see my father didn't have those big bales. We had the, the ones you could actually pick up, you know? And uh, it'd get kicked out, and there would be little pieces of dry stuff all over the place, you know, and you're there in the sun, and you're, you're stacking it in the hay wagon, and you're stacking it, and you're stacking it. And then the worst part came. You had to take it in the barn and unstack it, and it was really bad because there wasn't any wind, you know. It was enclosed, so for like a week later, you're coughing up chaff, <coughs> you know, sneezing it up, coughing it up, trying to get it out of your lungs. It, and you got done, you were filthy. Now, my sister told me whenever that happened, they all went and jumped in the river. <laughs> and I can understand why. That's quick, and that gets you clean or nothing flat. It says, your word is a lamp for my feet, a light on the path. If any of you have ever ended up outside in the dark, you know it is quite different. You may know the path, and you may know the area, but in the dark, and I mean dark, I don't mean moonlight, I mean dark, you can't see anything, you don't quite sure where you're at. So when you look at this, your word is a lamp for my feet. Number one, you don't want to stumble, okay? And you know there's roots, and there's rocks, and there's all kind of debris could be on there. It wouldn't even be a snake. Well, no, the snakes wouldn't be out at night. Some weird animal might be crossing your path or something. You don't want to step on it. Your word is a lamp for my feet, a light on my path. Spread it out. Let's see where I am exactly in this area, my surrounding. Where am I? It's a GPS. Don't you all have a GPS? <laughs> Everybody knows exactly where they're at. They put it in their GPS, and their GPS takes and shows a little line going. This is your GPS, a light on my path. 
your word. Word. In the beginning was the word. Without, nothing was made. The word. What is word? It is more than just the scripture. It's more. It's in that scripture. It's in that Bible. If you read the Bible, you will find the word. But it, the Bible is full of words. And when you talk about the words, you're talking with a, a capital W. That's the spirit of the Lord reaching out to you. Your word is a lamp in my feet because you are walking in darkness. I don't care how that noonday sun is bright. You're still living in a world that is pretty dark. One reason I don't watch the news anymore. I'm tired of hearing about mass shootings. I'm tired about people walking into places and just indiscriminately shooting anything that moved. I'm tired of it. That's darkness to me. That's a darkness of the heart and of the spirit. Why would you do that? Through life, you need something to guide you, something to show you the path, something to keep you safe. That is the word. And the word, like I said, is not only the words, but it's also the spirit of the Lord. In the beginning was the word. In the beginning was the word. I have taken an oath and confirmed it. We're going to be calling people up here, and we're going to be asking them questions. I have taken an oath and confirmed it, and they're going to have to say, yes, they're going to confirm. When you get baptized, the scariest thing is not the water, although they did have a situation with it, so please do not get disturbed, OK? Like I said, if anybody gets upset with the water, we'll go to the Racetown Lake, and I'll tell you it's pretty filthy, <laughs> OK? I've seen it. I don't like it. No, no. So don't worry about that. That's not important. What you have to do is change your life. Now, my husband has got himself on a new diet. And I don't want to hear anyone bringing this up to me when I'm doing the uh, downstairs eating of the fellowship meal, OK? I don't care. I get a break. <laughs> I want a break. <laughs> and the thing he keeps telling me is, he says, this has to be a change of life. Lots of vegetables, no sugar, just a certain amount of carbs, you know what that means. He's going to put olive oil in my butter. <laughs> He's going to go to skim milk. And I informed him, I can't drink skim milk, honey. It's water. I can't take it. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's fine. I said, I can't drink it. I'm taking 2%. At least let me have 2%. It's a change of life. That's exactly what we're asking these people to do, is to change their life. And it's not just for today. It's for the rest of their life. Because they have taken an oath and confirmed it. They've answered the questions, will you, will you, will you? And they said, yes. I have suffered much. And life's rough, folks. Growing up's rough. Going to school's rough. I can't imagine going to school today. Those halls, things going on, nope, nope. I have suffered much. But you know you're still alive. And you're calling on the Lord, preserve my life according to your word. Because his word says, believe in me. And I will take care of you. I am your rock of salvation. Cling to me, and I will walk you through anything. Anything. Sickness, destruction, you name it. God will be there. And it's even more important. He'll be in you to give you the strength to deal with whatever happens. What does he ask? What does God ask for all this? 
What do you ask when you give out your Christmas gifts? Huh? Thank you. Thank you. Accept, Lord, the willing praise of my mouth. Willing. You know how you tell your children, did you say thank you? And they say, thank you. Socks. <coughs> yeah. Willing. Be rejoiceful because he has done marvelous things. If you say, ah, oh, I just, it's just, I can't. Go outside and look at a tree. Look at a flower. Marvel at how something could grow out of the dirt, out of nothing. I marvel how I get petunias coming up through rocks. And I'm looking at, I have to go buy petunias, and you just showed up. Blooming, beautiful. Marvel at the miracles that God has created around us. Teach me your laws. You know, you can, and I bring this poor thing up about those stop signs. <laughs> how many of you knew, <laughs> how many of you knew what would happen if you didn't stop at that stop sign? I sure didn't know. I didn't know. There's one thing about hearing the rules, hearing the rules, and doing the rules same way in a classroom, same way in a job. There's safety rules. You can do this, you can't do that. You must learn the rules. You must learn the rules to survive. Milk and a cow. They always told me you go to the right side, never go to the left. You milk a cow off the right side. I don't know why you can't go to the left. I never tried it. But trust me, I followed the rules. <laughs> went to the right side. That's how I put the milkers on. See, there's always rules in life. We have all these traffic rules. I don't know them. You know, and that's why they put up signs, do not pass. <laughs> this is a pass with care, you know. This is reasons why they do it, because they know we don't know the law. Here it says, teach me your laws. You can read the word within the Bible, and that word lives within your heart. So when it comes time and I come to that stop sign, I know what a stop sign means. It means stop. When you come to a situation in your life, how do I handle this? The path will be given to you by the Spirit, by the word. This is what you should do. Love the Lord your God. Love your neighbor. Love yourself. No matter what, that's what you have to do. Though I constantly take my life in my hands. <laughs> How many times have you done something stupid? I knew, should have known, I shouldn't have done that. I was talking to someone who said that... Uh, they wanted to change something, so they were going to climb the ladder. And her husband said, no, you're not climbing that ladder. I'll climb the ladder. You can't climb that ladder. <laughs> you're going to fall down and get hurt, and you break a hip, you're going to end up in the rest home. You know? There's certain things you got to know you can do and you can't do. And one of them is climbing a ladder to change a sign from one way to cover it up so they could do two ways. And I told my husband, I can't do that anymore. But for one thing, the ladder's not stable, you know? It's sort of rickety, and it's got this big sign I got to, I said, no. I take my life in my hands. You do that sometimes. You do it anyway. But I do not forget your law. You look through here. You have word, laws, your word, your laws, your law. Do you understand? You must incorporate, incorporate a new way of living. And you can do this through the word. And we say the Holy Spirit comes upon you when you come up out of the baptismal water. That is the word within you, guiding you, helping you, strengthening you, 
counseling you. But you got to listen to it and you got to seek it out. If you don't, it does nothing for you. I mean, what good's a flashlight if you never turn it on in the dark? Eh, batteries went dead. Big deal. <laughs> the wicked have set a snare for me, but I have not strayed from your precepts. Precepts, rules governing your thought and actions. That's what it is. How do you act in this situation? And I tell you, I've told you before, I've got to learn to be more considerate of my fellow drivers when they do something stupid around me, okay? I have to remember that. I have, I have to, you know, say they must have a reason. Uh, they're in a big hurry. I bet they have to do something, you know. You got it, you got you to gotta love your neighbor. Your statues are my heritage forever. They are the joy of my heart. The joy of my heart. Now, I know your heart is this thing that pumps blood. But you know when you get happy, that heart is happy. And you know it. The joy of my heart. You always have those poems, my heart leaped. You know, that's joy. That's an emotional response to what's going on. And it reflects in your heart, by your heartbeat, by the blood going through your veins and your arteries. My heart is set on keeping your decrees to the very end. Now, I'm not just going to do it on Sunday. Well, you know, something came up and sort of wandered off. And OK, to the very end. It is a change in life. You must change your life when you come to baptism. When you accept Christ as your savior, you must change the way you live. It's not easy. I mean, we're human. Someone hits us, our reaction is you hit them back. Nope. A new way of life. A new way of life. I don't know how long I'm going to be on this diet. <laughs> I have severe doubts about it because I really, I really been eating some really weird food. <laughs> he has his butter he sprays on the vegetables. It's not butter. I don't know what it is, you know. But I understand, and I know. I have to make that choice. I have to make that choice. And not only do I have to make it, I got to live it. And that means I took all the cookies and gave them to my son. Because <laughs> I'm there going, oh, we're not allowed to eat any snacks. And he turned around the table and says, what's all this? I said, you're taking it with you. That's what it is. I don't want it. I don't want it in the house. I don't want it to tempt me. Change of life, folks. If you have, part of what we're going to be doing today is a reaffirmation on your part of your baptismal vows, a reaffirmation that you are changing, making sure you have the word in your life, in your heart, and you're willing to live by the laws, the righteous laws, the precepts, the guidance that God has given us.